We just hit 5000 subscribers on this channel a couple of days ago. Thank you all so much for the support. To celebrate, I thought I'd share something super special. A project that's been nearly 7 years in the making. By far the biggest project I worked on, my electric skateboard. The project which taught me almost all electronics basics I know today. It had countless revisions and the thing you see today is nowhere near to what it used to be like in the beginning. So sit back, relax and let me take you through the journey of building my biggest project yet which taught me the most. Like many of you, my electronics journey started small. Just me, a soldering iron that my parents bought me, some batteries, LEDs and resistors. The curiosity snowballed over the years and eventually I was building power supplies, power banks, headphones and my favorite, Bluetooth speakers. Back in the day, I used to hang out at the skate park quite often. I used to ride my skateboard and BMX all the time. When Casey Neistat showcased his first boosted board, I was stunned. It was a freaking electric skateboard. I just couldn't wrap my head around this crazy idea. The moment I saw it, I of course wanted one like crazy. But the sad part was that boosted boards used to cost somewhere in the $1500 range and would end up costing me more than 2000 euros if I decided to import one from the US to Europe. Since my budget was more like 15 euros back then, I set a goal to build my own. I was a total noob with no clue about Ohm's law or batteries, but after binge watching hundreds of YouTube tutorials and spending about 200 euros on parts from eBay, and remember there was no AliExpress back then, I was ready to give it a shot. After waiting around 2 months for all of the parts to arrive, I finally had them all in one place. It was the cheapest 5045 BLDC motor I could find and to make it spin the wheel I found a DIY electric skateboard chain drive kit. To hold the motor to the truck I also found a simple aluminum mount and the drive train was complete. To spin the motor I got a Hobby King ESC and to control it I 3D printed and built myself an Arduino remote controller. The last piece of the puzzle was the battery and the batteries were very expensive at the time. A friend of mine who flew RC planes offered to sell me two 3S packs which were in some kind of a helicopter crash but the price was very good so I took them. They weren't ideal but they could output a ton of current which was perfect for such a project. It took me a few hours to put it all together and at the end of the day the board was completed and ready to be tested. I rushed outside to give it a try and to my surprise everything worked. It was fast, fun and honestly the coolest thing I'd ever made. The battery wasn't fully charged so it lasted only around 15 minutes but it was getting dark so I had to head back home anyway. But then disaster struck. I'd barely fallen asleep when I woke up to a whistling noise and a burning smell. My DIY longboard was on fire. The battery had no BMS, the cells were unbalanced and it all went up in flames. In a panic I grabbed scissors, cut all of the wires and threw the burning pack outside. It was terrifying. I learned two things that night. Always use a BMS and mistakes are just opportunities to learn if they don't get you killed of course. The fire didn't discourage me. I spent months researching and building a proper battery pack with a BMS this time. I kept improving the board, new motors, better electronics, custom enclosures and a reliable remote controller. This year I decided to give the project a complete overhaul, bringing it to a level that I'm truly proud of. Let me show you what it looks like today. And here it is, the board that's taken years to perfect. Let's break down the main specs. It has a top speed of 40 km an hour, which is roughly 25 miles per hour. It can last around 25 km on a single charge, depending on how aggressive I am with the throttle. 25 km is around 16 miles. The deck is an OG loaded Vanguard, the same deck boosted boards used, and it is the best deck I ever tried. For motors, I went with a dual 5045 set from Onboard. They should be able to output around 2 kW peak and they do have enough torque to make the board fly away from under me if I'm not being careful. I built the battery with Senio 2700 cells and for the ESC I went with a dual Flipsky FS ESC with an integrated switch. The only thing missing is the remote and since I was going for a boosted clone back in the day, I decided to build the Firefly remote, designed by Solid Geek over at GitHub. The board is crazy fast, powerful and crazy fun to ride. And now let's talk about how I built it. But before I get into the details, a quick word from today's video sponsor. This video is brought to you by JLC PCB, your one-stop solution for high-quality PCB manufacturing. Whether you're working on a personal project or a professional prototype, JLC PCB offers PCBs with precision, reliability and fast turnaround times, all starting at just $2 for your first order. Simply upload your design, choose your specs and let JLC PCB handle the rest. If you're not comfortable assembling the boards yourself, they got you covered with their industry-leading SMT services. The special thing about JLC PCB from my experience is that they offer low quantity boards for personal projects at unbeatable prices. This $10 order could have been more than 5 times more expensive at some other manufacturers, so when you're ready to take your project to the next level, head to jlcpcb.com to get started. 
I wish I filmed every step, but building this was a mad rush to get riding before summer. I do have pictures I used to send to my friends, and I think it will be still interesting to see the whole process. I decided to design enclosures from the ground up. I was lucky enough to find a loaded Vanguard deck 3D model on CrabCAD, which helped me design these because the deck is curved in almost every way, and the bottom of the enclosure can be just flat. Everything was designed in Fusion 360, and since I got an opportunity to 3D print these on an SLS 3D printer, I immediately went for it. I added all of the necessary features and printed them both. They turned out awesome and I decided to give them a coat of matte black paint to make them look nicer. Since I designed some special washers to hold these to the deck, I also had to mill those and in the end I used a laser cutter to cut some waterproof foam that's going to create a seal between the enclosures and the deck. After the enclosures were done, it was time to prepare the deck. When you have two enclosures, you need a set of wires connecting the battery with the rest of the electronics. And I usually used to run it on the bottom of the deck, which didn't look professional at all. I successfully borrowed the router this time and made two channels on the top of the deck to run these wires while keeping them hidden. The wires fit perfectly inside and with grip tape on top, you don't even know they are there. Since the deck was used for a couple of years at that point, I decided to sand it down and apply a new layer of lacquer to make it look a little bit nicer. To protect the deck, I also designed and milled a bumper and at this point I was ready to build the battery pack. When building the battery pack, I wanted to find the cells that would offer me the best ratio of capacity, output current and price. After searching for a bit, I stumbled upon the Senio 2700 cells, which can output 30 amps continuously and have a capacity of 3620 million powers. The the price at the time was only 2.9 euros a piece, so I got 30 of them. The plan was to build a 10S3P pack, but in the end I went for a 10S2P since 30 cells inside the enclosure would be just too heavy to carry around on a daily basis. I learned my lesson the first time, so BMS is mandatory, and for it, I'm using a daily BMS from AliExpress. I used many cheap BMS boards, and these daily ones proved to be the most reliable. My board can draw more than 60 amps, but high current BMSs are expensive and huge, so I decided to use mine only for charging and balancing the cells. The VESC has an under voltage protection cutout, so that shouldn't be a problem. I designed a case for all of the cells to make them more protected, and when it was all printed, I started spot welding the cells together. At first, I got some 0.3mm nickel strip, thinking it would be better for high currents, but as it turned out, this 0.3mm strip is just too thick and none of the welders I had could weld it properly. In the end, I used 0.15mm strips, which welded much easier and it handled the current without any problems. After the cells were welded together, it was time to connect the BMS and the charging port and at that point, the battery was done. I won't speak much about the drivetrain and the VESC, since both of these are off-the-shelf parts. I got an onboard drivetrain which is built of 250-45-270 kV motors that have sensors so they can be run in fog mode. The kit included a bunch of stuff, but I also got Kegel pulleys. And since I did have Kegel wheels, which were again used on the OG boosted boards, I decided to install them. The ESC I'm using is a Flipsky FS ESC, which is a VESC based speed controller with two motor outputs. It has an integrated anti-spark switch which is awesome, and if you want to see more details, I'll leave the links down below. For the remote, I really wanted something that had proper telemetry, something that would show me my battery voltage and how fast I'm going. Since the beginning of this project, I have been building Firefly remotes and well, I decided to use one again. It's an Arduino based open source remote controller for VES controllers and it does work pretty well. It looks like a boosted one and the display is pretty neat, but I did have some connection issues recently, so I will be upgrading it soon. The final step was to close everything together and to install the new grip tape. I was amazed at how good the board looked in the end and I was riding it every day to work and back. It was fun, fast, reliable and the battery lasted more than I needed. I was riding it every day but eventually a really sad thing happened one time I dropped the board a little too hard. The plastic battery enclosure broke since the 3D printed parts weren't strong enough and so I was stuck riding my board like this for the next few months. I was so pissed when it broke since I put in so much effort to make everything look as clean as possible but after some time I finally got the courage to fix it and make it look nice again. I watched some videos by Easy Composites, designed my mold, printed it and gave up. Then I redid the enclosure model, printed it, reinforced it with fiberglass and vacuum bagged it with a clothes vacuum bag. I used Vaseline or petroleum jelly as mold release and after letting it dry for around 3 days I was able to take the enclosure outside the bag without any problems. 
Then I had to trim the excess and sand everything to make it as smooth as possible. Then I painted it black and the new enclosure was done. In the meantime, I also changed the kegels to these green abec wheels since the kegels were slowly falling apart. And that's it for this season. I really hope you enjoyed watching me talk about this project and if you did, please don't forget to let me know down below in the comments so I know if I should make more videos about electric skateboards. I would love to build an all-terrain board one day and it would be super cool to make a video about it. Enjoyed it or not, this really was the ultimate project when you can learn a bunch of stuff like woodworking, fiberglassing, composite making, battery building, electronics, BLDC motors, 3D printing and 3D modeling, programming with Arduino and basically any other skill needed when designing a new product. I would love to make videos about batteries and composites and if there's anything else you would like to see you can easily let me know down below. And that's it. If I missed any details, feel free to ask. And if you enjoyed watching this video, don't forget to leave it a like. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any future uploads. And I hope to see you in the next one.